Hello, everybody. It is I, DM Tim, here to uh, give you a update or a rundown on the updated uh, versions of uh, my expedition to the Barrier Peaks map. So this was the, oh, well, this is the original map as it was built. As you can see, I didn't have any doors or anything like that. I just used different colored walls for the doors and also this big tube. Uh, the elevator shaft was uh, always kept flat. Um, however, recently I acquired some new assets. And so now we actually have functional doors on all of the floors. So now uh, if you're using this map, when someone opens up a door, you can push the one and two keys while highlighting the uh the door and actually have the doors open and closed um the areas that actually didn't have like closed doors i haven't put the doors in those sections because it's always implied that those doors uh no longer exist or are non-functional so you can't actually close them so only the doors that are able to be opened can be closed again um so yeah uh, we have opening and closing doors. Um, I added in just a couple of basic black um, semicircles in order to uh, create the uh, the entrance tube. I also found this door here, uh, and I added that in because this is like the area where the, the players first come in. And when you trigger the effect, it actually hisses and opens up. So it gives the players a cool uh entryway uh to the uh and does the same with the maps when it closes um as for everything else there aren't a great deal of changes uh except to say that all of the walls have now been completely realigned uh when i initially did the map everything was not uh it wasn't set to the grid because I didn't really uh, know how to uh, to realign things back then. So everything was sort of, you know, a couple of degrees off. The walls were all sort of wonky, but now everything is set up uh, in 90-degree angles. Um, and, uh, oh, that was the other thing too. The, the medical lab here, I found some uh, medical cabinets to replace the standard uh, alchemical shelves. Um I am planning on putting in a new uh, research desk here for the worker robot to be working on. And I have acquired, um, but haven't uh, been able to utilize yet, some actual miniature arcade machines. So the idea will be uh, in the future, if I can get it to work, um, you'll actually have uh, actual playable arcade machines. But if that doesn't work, I will be using the um, uh, the movie asset thing to actually have small uh, like start screens for the different games on the arcade machines, like in a looping video. So uh, those rooms will look a lot a lot more um, active. Um, and yeah, so that's the first floor. The second floor didn't get any changes apart from uh, the the ring section here. Uh, the third floor, however, um, also has these doors and the updated section here. Uh, the main thing that has changed here is I have updated the uh, the pillars here. Uh, these pillars um, are actually ropers in disguise. So now they have a multi-state set up with the ropers. And also, um, I'll just grab one of the guard bots here, for example... Uh, previously, the uh, the tendrils and whatnot um, were actually part of the hitbox. Now, the hitbox for these things is actually more functional, so they're actually usable. Beforehand, these things were, like, you couldn't even put them close to the walls because they would just completely uh, go crazy. So now these are actually usable um, as an asset, which is what you always want. Uh don't necessarily need it to be uh, overly swish, but it does need to be practical. That's the main thing. Um, I still haven't been able to acquire a, um, a colored version of the Grells, but uh, that's on the list of things to do. 
uh, and of course the uh, the Gricks uh, that are there as they always are. Uh, down to the next floor. Uh, floor four, again, got the same makeover, uh, realignment of the walls and the doors. Um, the main updates here is I have managed to create a colored version of the frog hemoth model, um, which is really important because that's your main villain in this particular floor, uh, as well as we now have a customized version of the Arumbarax, uh, the, uh, the eight-limbed uh, hyperdense ferret. Um, I fixed up the wolf in sheep's clothing. It now um, has all of the assets uh, contained once more. Uh, also updated this bridge. Um, and I think that was it really for this floor, apart from the, the tubes. But mostly just the tubes and the doors for this floor. The floor that probably got the biggest makeover apart from the first floor would be uh, the next floor, floor six. So for floor six, this has had a, a pretty significant update. So we now have uh, a bunch of gym equipment uh, and actual barbells and things for the workout bot to throw at uh, the, uh, the player characters when he's trying to get them to work out. Uh, you still have your fencing and kung fu bots uh, in here, uh, the sauna and everything as it always has been. However, we now have a multi-leveled uh, stadium seating uh, for uh, these areas here. So it's not quite as just bland and flat. Uh, the swimming pool, again, also has the stadium seating as well, as well as the doors. Now, there is actually supposed to be a tunnel that goes underneath the stairs, so I'll just put a door on either end of that, um, as well as a boxing ring for the uh, the boxing robot to, uh, to duel your players in. Um, additionally, we now have the ramps. It was always a bit of a trick, um, if you weren't really paying attention to understand how the players actually get from the uh, the uh, the fourth floor to the uh, to the sixth floor, uh, and let me just take you back up the top. So if you look here, these areas that sort of fade off are actually the ramps. So these ramps lead down to the bottom deck. So these elevators basically finish here they don't actually take you any uh further at least um they don't take you down to floor six they uh actually take you down to floor seven um which is the expanded floor in the goodman games version but otherwise if you actually travel down here you end up uh, at a dead end at the bottom of uh, floor five. The other way you would get down is using the cargo elevators. But if we go to floor five, uh, you'll find that this area, this bit here, that's the blacked out area of the tube that heads down. So a player that would go down would just end up in a, a blank area. And these large squares are actually the blocked off, area, blocked off areas for the ramps uh, that lead you down to uh, level six so you get a bit more of an understanding of the way the map works uh, again updated the doors on level five uh, we still have the, uh, the 3d sleds that model hasn't changed uh, and um, it's the slithering tracker in the uh, the puddle of water so no real changes to uh, the uh, the fifth floor um, as it's an in-between deck and it has minimal uh, things that required changing uh, back to floor six. So as I was saying, um, the theaters are now um, a lot better. I've actually found some proper curtains, like some faded rotten curtains to place across these now. Uh, they are sections, so you can you know, pull them away if need be. Uh, the Mind Flayer is still hanging out in his little um, den. Uh, you have the fungus filled one with the piercer that's actually meant to be above this area. And they actually drop down on top of the the players when they pop into this area here. Um, once more, using the different tiles, we have raised uh, stages as well as the stage here. That is also a raised level. Um, and uh, apart from the ramps, that's the only real major changes. Uh, and then, of course, we have 
the exit area. Um, so this is the way that the players would get out. So I've actually set this up so that you can have the door opened for when the, the players get uh, thrown out of uh, the the ship and have to fight the, uh, the bullet. However, uh, one thing I realized that we didn't have for this was actually an exterior map. So I've taken the liberty and gone and built that as well. So what we have now is the exterior map of the, uh, the crash ship. Uh, there was actually two bits of artwork uh, that I used as inspiration for this. I'll pop them up here and here or over there um, so you can see them. So the entrance is, of course, this top door here. And there's actually the, the, the players are meant to sort of scurry up the rock. And this door, when they arrive, is open. And then when they make their way down to the bottom, this is the door where they get thrown out of. And so... Uh, again, using the trigger, have the open and closing door effects. Uh, and you've got a bag here for the ending encounter, which has the bullet as well as the worker robots that you can place on. Stand up, you fools. There we go. You can set them up here and have them you know trying to keeping the the uh, the players away while they fight the the bullet on the exterior of the ship um and yeah that's now that's it for the uh the unmodified version of course but what will be coming uh very very soon uh, a bit of a sneak peek i will soon be uploading the uh, updated floors, or the not the updated floor, sorry, the additional floor, the bonus floor, um, available in the Goodman Games expansion. So let me give you a preview of that. So now this is floor seven. Uh, the orientation of it is slightly off. Uh, the uh, the elevator tubes are actually you know, it, the ship is the map is sort of slightly rotated around, um, but. As you can see here, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. It's mostly a cargo deck. Um, there are a crap load of worker robots being controlled by uh, a couple of guard bots in this room here. Um, there's a, another massive storage room also patrolled by guard bots. This room here is a room for uh, Android reprogramming. Um, so depending on how the, uh, the players, uh, perform in this room here, they can actually create, uh, loyal androids or murder bots that are going to try and kill them. Um, over here, we have a whole bunch of, uh, stored genetic experiments. Um, the, the scientists were sort of messing around with mixing DNA. And you also have here, uh, one of the things, this is a type two biological entity and this is a type one biological entity uh according to the book uh they had very bizarre descriptions but no um uh, no pictures of them so i actually use the description like saying you know one basically it has a uh, a turtle snout and rabbit ears massive hulk and hunched over so i had to that was how i built the, this one here and the same deal with these ones here uh, pointy ears, but rat-like faces, and uh, one of them is wielding a, uh, a fireman's axe. So I just gave them all fireman's axes just because. Uh, this room here is uh, a programming and storage room for uh, this particular uh, bot. It's a uh, an even more powerful version of the um, uh, the guard bot. This is basically like a a planetary. Uh, survey destroyer attack drone type thing. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, over here, you have uh, conveyor storage uh, with a behair hanging out, doing all sorts of cool stuff. Um, there is a phase spider that chills out in this uh, cargo bay. Um, these areas here are rooms where people have been put into cryostasis, and this is the room where people are woken up from cryostasis uh, there's a bunch of other really cool things you can do uh, like if people uh, get stuck on on these they can get injected with 
uh, the chemicals that they use to wake people up after they've been uh, woken up out of stasis, which gave them like a permanent haste spell um, for, um, I think, like for the next 24 hours. Uh, but then they suffer extreme withdrawals after the fact. Uh, the main engine uh, core room here has these giant vampoid bat creatures that lurk in here, which is a whole bunch of fun to deal with. Um, there are some gibbering mouthers in here, failed, um, mutated experiments. And in here, there is a mutant two headed umber hulk. I don't have a, a double head uh, umber hulk on here, but he's created a nest out of a bunch of. Uh, boxes so that's the main encounter here but probably the coolest encounter on this floor is this thing the creature known as the death drinker essentially it's like a biological super organism that has been uh, either found or adapted by um the uh the people on board the ship before the uh the crash occurred um won't go into it too much but this thing is basically a um kind of a hybrid of a xenomorph and a predator it's like a pred alien but you know not a pred alien uh four limbs uh two tails um and we'll seriously mess up your your party um the person that or one, someone that survived beforehand has actually been worshiping this thing like they put like skulls around it in order to uh to have it to be uh a a monument to its greatness but i think one of the cool things to do uh if you plan on including this particular expansion uh in your barrier peaks games i would almost suggest having the the death drinker just on the loose from the get-go have this thing just constantly harassing your players just have this thing on their tails for the whole time and just to, to give them something to keep them moving at a, a swift pace or at least try to find more and more equipment in order to deal with this particular thing uh, a way to really uh really mess with your players and that's always a fun thing to do um apart from that that's really it um still a really cool addition um i'm, I'm not going to go into it i'm not going to like show like uh, stats or anything like that um because uh, if you want to know how all this stuff actually works in terms of the encounters uh you have to go out and buy the uh, the goodman games book because i thoroughly want to uh support their their business because i absolutely love their book and i am a massive massive fan um and speaking of there is another additional uh bit that i'm going to be putting in here as well um on the first floor we go back up in this room here there are these pods now in the uh, the main um, adventure, there these don't do anything. However, in the Goodman Games um, edition, if you want to, these are actually virtual reality pods. And when the party loads into them, they get to play a mini side adventure called the Quest for the Venomous Warlord. And the way it's described, it's very much a uh, a nineteen eighties uh, style game everything is green and pixelated and uh really really retro in the way that it works and so they have a map for that particular adventure as well as a bunch of uh low level characters you can pick to uh to play as that like you know the character select screen um but i've gone ahead and created um giving it the matrix code background with the looping animation uh that i found out you can do with this uh this is the map for the venomous warlord so everything i've made uh pixelated in terms of the graphics so that everything is squared up um this is the original map that they provide in the the game uh, in the book, I should say, I've just uh, scanned it into my um, my computer, turned it green and, and black rather than black and white, and then uh, added 
the other bits and pieces to it. Um, and in terms of the assets, I discovered some Minecraft <laughs> creatures that you can use for it. So you've got uh, rocks, you know, orcs, uh, some skeletons, some void spirits. Um, someone has a spiritual weapon. Uh, there's the mini venomous warlord. Uh, there's rubies that you need to collect. And of course, being an old, st old style game, you've got to have the square ones. Uh, the two halves of the key. Essentially, the adventurer is you start off in this room here and then you've sort of got to make your way through here. You've got to get one half of the key in this room, one half of the key in this room. Uh, open the door, make your way through this room, and then you make your way into the main room where the venomous warlord has captured uh, the princess and you have to rescue the princess. Um, and yeah, so very easy mini side adventure. I've actually just added in just for the for ease of use if you want to have basic NPC characters uh, rather than having to use the ones from the uh, the book uh, just to keep things a bit simpler. So uh, that will be uploaded soon as well. So yeah, that is our look or your look, the look at the uh, soon to be updated, um, uploaded, um, well, tell a lie. The uh, the levels one through six have already been uploaded onto the uh, Steam Workshop. So if you look up Expedition to the Barrier Peaks in the Tabletop Simulator uh, Workshop, you'll be able to find all of those. The uh, This map here, the uh, level seven and the Venomous Warlord map, uh, will be available within the next week or so. I'm still got a couple of things that I want to tweak on these we're trying to find like a decent uh tree background uh for this to making uh the exterior um but if i can't i'll just end up using using this um also need to go through and make sure i've got the correct uh assets set up for the um level seven make sure that all the assets are still um still active and actually not uh, just uh, assets that have been uh, put away in in my cache um, so that it will work for me but it won't work for everyone else so I just got to make sure that those assets are still functioning but anyway um, I hope this has uh, inspired uh, some people out there that uh, have not decided to try Expedition to the Barrier Peaks using Tabletop Simulator uh, um, to do so um, yeah until next time, I have been your humble DM, Tim, and uh, please remember to keep on blending. Bye!